tonight we're discussing the move towards a cashless society. Ghana took giant strides towards a cashless economy following the emergence of a variety of electronic transactions and payment systems currently flooding the market. In 1997, the Societe Generale, the bank popularly known as SSB, issued a SICA card onto which a cash amount could be electronically loaded. A consortium of Ecobank, Cow Bank, and Trust Bank issued the e-card in 2001. The e-card is an online debit card. Now, in 2005, the Ghana National Net Settlement Service, GNNSS, was inaugurated to link together the ATMs of major banks. Now, tonight, the e-switch came along following the and a GNNSS uh, platform which merged the ATM banks and the telecos in Ghana have also created a solid infrastructure for mobile financial transactions. Tonight we will take a look at the benefits of a cashless society and how MTN's mobile money transfer and other uh, cashless electronic systems are, are helping to achieve a cashless society for Ghana. Is Ghana's economy ready to move? And is this exotic, maybe? We'll find out all this in tonight's discussion. You can join us by posting your comment on our Facebook or facebook.com slash multi-tv or on any of our Facebook platforms. You can also send a text, uh, 1760 across all networks. My guest tonight in the studio is Commercial Senior Mobile Money Officer for MTN, Eli Hini. Welcome, sir, to our show. And then I have George Babafemi, who is the Chief Operating Officer for eTransact. Later on in the show, we'll get on to the phone lines and speak to John Gachi, who is an economics, and Kweku Tete, who is Head of Projects at the Ghana Interbank Payment Systems, GIFS. Good evening and welcome to PM Express, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you now, let's start much, with you. the simple question. Are we there yet? I'll take it from you, George, first. Are we there yet? Can we say we are a cashless society? No, 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 no. We are far from it, but we've started. That's my very short answer. We are not there yet. Nobody in Africa is there yet, but we have started. That's so, I, I mean, if we, if we look at the the IT, technology advancements across the world and across Africa. What do we require to get there? Maybe we should start by letting people know what cashless is. Just like the word implies, two words in one, without cash, cashless. I'm not sure we can actually attain full cashless, but a, a mixture, an hybrid of cashless and cash, maybe cash light environment. Now looking at the technology that is, that is needed to put this in place and the players in the industry, I think what we can say about our own Ghana is that we have enough infrastructure to start with. And then we have enough stakeholders to start with for now. What types of infrastructure do we need to, to make this happen? I mean, because we've heard a lot of things. We've heard um, the ATM uh, transactions. We've heard the creation of the GNSSS systems. Sometimes all these things are confusing. What kind of platforms are required to, 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 to merge towards an efficient cashless society systems? Cashless is spending money without the use of cash, the physical cash. And so these are possible by the use of mobile phone, the internet, the card system, the ATM like you have said, anything that will make you not have physical touch of cash is what we need. But all these things I'm talking about, they are just devices that are put together by one form of connectivity or the other. So we have the devices, we have solid mobile networks in the is in the system today. We have almost all the ATMs connected, uh, the ATMs are there. We have the society themselves. I mean, there is high penetration rate of mobile penetration in Ghana. So the people have the, 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 the tools to use. They 
backbones, the, the, the service providers, we have MTN here tonight, who is driving MTN Mobile Money, they are solid on ground. Bank of Ghana is doing its own to connect the bank's ATM. So we can say the infrastructures are there. But that is side one. The second side is adoption, which we are not there yet. What do you think are the problems that is making adoption uh, difficult or a challenge? Culture. To, to, cultural to problem. Cultural problem. From time immemorial, we're used to carrying our cash around. To today, we still carry our cash around. It's a paradigm shift. We need a paradigm shift from that. It's one thing to have the infrastructure. It's one thing for people to use the infrastructure. So, and that is embedded in our culture. People want to see the cash. Even the educated want to feel, feel the money. The want to feel the feel cash. Feel the luchi. I mean, so, so, I mean, it will take some time. And some to education. Make, some, not some education, a lot of education. A lot of education. To move people away. Like I said, the infrastructure is not a problem today. We have been in system for some time. Gibbs is there. MT, we have the same challenge. Adoption today. And I think it's about culture, like you said. A generation may even have to go before we can see full-blown cashless. But you would attest to the fact that there are numerous advantages of a cashless society. Of course, I'm sure. Okay, I'm so sure let me come back to, to, to you, uh, Ellie. Yeah. Now, MTN, we know that MTN uh, has set aside the month of August for its mobile money uh, month. Yes. Tell us about mobile money and where that fits into this whole uh, emergence uh, to cashless society. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Um, I'll, I'll start by talking about the MTN Mobile Money Month, uh, which is uh, um, uh, August, uh, which we have set aside to actually take the opportunity to uh, bring the whole mobile money story to the doorstep of Ghanaians. Uh, so we'll be able to educate them about the service, uh, activate them uh, so they can own wallets, and uh, to be able to get them to experience the service and, and create a lot of excitement uh, in the market. Now, we, we believe that um, that would make us uh, attract a lot of people and also be able to uh, work on the issue of adoption that uh, George mentioned, mentioned, which is very key because uh, without having people use the service, uh, you will not be able to drive uh, towards the cashless society we are talking about. So we actually did launch the month-long uh, activities uh, this morning at our head office uh, at Ridge. And the, the whole theme is uh, uh, MTN uh, mobile money uh, creating a cashless uh, economy with your mobile phone. So the, the, the whole linkage there, which you, you did mention, is, is the fact that um, MTN Mobile Money is pretty much providing you with uh, a wallet uh, for you to be able to uh, do your basic financial transactions, which otherwise you'd have had to sometimes go to the bank or go somewhere else to do it. You can now do those things from the comfort of your office, home, wherever you are. So first of all, you are trying to introduce convenience to, to people. And most people who today do not participate in, in, in the banking sector uh, would also be able to participate because of uh, uh, mobile money, uh, because then they will be able to access uh, uh, some banking services via their phones. And we all know the phones are commonplace. Uh, I was just checking the NCA um, uh, website before I came. And uh, we are talking about 23.3 million Ghanaians who today have access to uh, mobile uh, uh, phones. Now, and um, so it, it gives yeah. us an opportunity to be able to bring a lot more people into the space uh, to be able to enjoy uh, the, the service. Now, let me make a comparison between the MTN mobile money and the e-switch platform, for example. I mean, when the e-switch started, I, I, I have an e-switch card. I've never used uh, either because I find it uh, difficult to use when I go for, to the point of sale terminals. There are some places I can use, some places I cannot use. So I feel that from my perspective as a consumer, um, there were not sufficient payment platforms in the system for 
everyone to feel comfortable. How different will the mobile money, uh, uh, MTN mobile money be from, from eSwitch, for example? Um, in, in terms of um, the, the way the two work, it's, it's pretty much similar. Uh, the difference here is that with the eSwitch, you're using a card. And uh, in this case, you, you have your phone. So whereas your, your account is sitting on a card, in this case, your account is sitting on a phone. Um, that is one side. And the issue of adoption, which uh, George talked about, once again, we'll need to look at critically. Because if you introduce these uh, platforms and you do not uh, get a lot of people using it, then you do not get a benefit. And it starts from uh, educating people, getting people to know about, about the service. And, and the education part is very key because that is what transforms behavior and getting people to understand the advantages that they stand to get and how using the service can transform their everyday things they do today with all the hassle. For instance, um, if you take uh, mobile money today, um, I want to send money to somebody. Uh, typically, I'd have had to either get somebody going in his direction to send the money, or I'll go to the bank and pay it into his account, or I would find another means to send it. But with mobile money, with two of us having wallets, I just sit in my office, once I have money, I can, with technology, move money from my regular account onto my, my wallet and then send it to you. So I would have saved all that time that would have taken me to the banking hall. And the bank themselves would have also saved themselves all the high traffic that they would have to deal with in the banking hall. And they may also not require to build bank branches all over the place. So all those would become savings in the economy to enhance business. So there are a lot of opportunities around it, but once again, it is how to change people's behavior and, and bring them to accept this form of, 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 of doing business right. and transactions. Uh, changing people's behavior. This is PM Express live on Joe News, on your multi-TV, and we're discussing the move towards a cashless economy. Uh, I have on the telephone line now John Gachi, who is an economist, and I'll go on to speak with him. Hello, John, if you can hear me. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. Good evening. Um, cashless economy. What will be the advantage of a cashless system on our economy, an economy like, like, like Ghana's? Well, there are lots of uh, uh, benefits or effects that this system will have on the economy. Let's go to the revenue system, where virtually all the payment of tax liability are done with cash and with interface with uh, authorities or officers involved in the tax payment system. And that breeds a lot of uh, corruption and a lack of transparency. But with the introduction of cashless system, you realize that the interface between the officer and those who are paying taxes could be limited, and uh, government can generate more tax revenue. And the issue of corruption, bribery, can be updated significantly. So that is one benefit uh, that the economy can derive. Then again, the general convenience to all people, those who are engaging in both domestic transactions and international transactions, will become more convenient uh, to them. And the cost, the surface cost and the hidden cost involved in using cash will also be reduced drastically. And if you come to the general financial system and the banking system in particular, this will help us to achieve what we call economies of scope, in which we will have a lot of uh, banking products or tools uh, that will be used to ensure that the policy of cashless system is implemented effectively and at a convenience at lower cost to people. Uh, the, the, the panel at your studio mentioned some of these tools that I have captured into economies of scope. They mentioned ATM, mobile banking, uh, using uh, the MTM system that is being introduced, and there are many more debit cards, 
uh, the credit cards, all these things will be introduced in the system. That will enhance economies of scope. And all this generally reducing the cost of banking system. And this can also reduce the cost that customers they care when they interface with the financial system. So to a large extent, I would have a large spectrum of benefits that the economy can derive. But I might indicate that for a cashless economy to operate efficiently and effectively, to positively affect the economy, uh, we cannot experience that if we have a disjointed approach to introduction of cashless uh, uh, payment system. For example, MTN has taken a private initiative because of the opportunity and uh, our ICT infrastructure available and the willingness by a certain class of people to engage in the usage of these facilities. Uh, it, in other countries where this has worked uh, very effectively, it is a national economic policy that has been addressed by the government of the day. Uh, or the financial central bank. So it helps all the stakeholders together to ensure that this is addressed in a more coordinated manner. But what we are seeing in Ghana right now is that individual corporate entities are just taking advantage and it's not holistic and it's not well coordinated. Now, um, Mr. Gachi, I'm thinking that if we look at... Uh, the e-switch. I use the e-switch as a typical example because the idea is to create uh, an intro uh, interoperability uh, uh, platform for all the stakeholders to be able to have a common platform. If I look at the e-switch and the rate of its success, do you think we are making good progress towards a cashless economy? Are we making any progress at all anyway? Uh, we have just started. And uh, the progress is not significant to write home about. Uh, if you take the history, for example, uh, the education was not effective. Anytime you are introducing this system, education is very, very important. The education was not effective. And in addition to that, uh, point of, uh, I mean, the POS, I mean, the point that we should operate is, uh, uh, this uh, card are not sufficient across the country, and we are not used to this system before. So if you do not deploy the infrastructure that people should use to ensure that they use the system effectively, then it is bound to fail. So that was one of the reasons. In fact, if you go throughout Accra right now, you will see very limited number of shops that you can use the AT, uh, the, the, the e uh, card. So that was a pain Oh, that is the pain of the EC uh, system. So until we address this shortfalls, I do not think that we will make any serious headway with the uh, EC. I think along the line, in order to ensure that the system works, it was imposed on certain class of workers in the country to use them by all means. For example, the allowances of national service persons have been paid or are being paid to the EC system. Uh, so what, what, what of the rest of the population who have these cards in their pockets without using it? So those things have to be addressed before the, uh, the history system become more uh, effective. Thank you and very much. Yes, yes, sir. You can go on, sir. Sorry. Yeah, in, in addition to that, new systems are coming up, like the mobile banking, uh, etc. are coming up. So they are coming to compete with the history system. Uh, people must have the right to make a choice. And definitely people will make a choice that is more convenient uh, to, to them. So we need to look at all these things holistically. Thank you very much. I'll get back to you, uh, Mr. Gachi, later on in the discussions. But right now, I'll come back to the studio to you, George Bafemi. Now, you heard, you heard uh, Mr. Gachi talk about the various challenges that uh, the eSwitch platform, for example, has had, which is making it um, this cashless transition a little more inefficient. Uh, E-Transact, I mean, you as Chief Operating Officer of E-Transact introduced a couple of um, electronic payment systems. How do you think that is, is 
is helping erase all the challenges with the uh, transition? Hmm. The challenges are still there and I believe they will be ruled out gradually. You talked about interoperability. I mean, silos. Silos of, the, the other thing is not being looked at in a holistic manner. Even though we see eSwitch as a national project, but I'm not seeing the entire, entire machinery of the government being really, it's more like being forcing things down rather than building a foundation of education. So you, look, like, you think the problem with the eSwitch efficiency is foundation? that they got the foundation wrong or they are ha having challenges with the foundation? What you exactly is You see, is, is I the think the challenge eSwitch is having is not going to be limited to eSwitch. Each transact has the same challenge, similar. And I believe MTM Mobile Money is having the same challenge. Well, and um, I think the challenge is largely that of adoption. Right. Uh, I beg your pardon. I'll have to go quickly on mm. the line now and speak to head of projects at uh, Ghana Interbank payment system GIPS. Uh, good evening, sir, Mr. Kweku Tete. If you are you are there, sir. Good evening, sir, Mr. Tete. Yeah, good evening. Yes, thank you for uh, your patience, sir. You heard a lot of uh, discussions focusing on how e switch really didn't catch on or has not caught on very well, and the the issues with the uh, uh, inavailability of sufficient point of sale. POPs around for people to, to have easy access. How are you addressing the challenges uh, in, in, in the area of e switch operations? Well, um, a number of the things that have been said are true. Uh, are some too, I beg to differ on them. Which of, which of them do you say are true and which of them do you beg to differ? Uh, one of the things that was said. Uh, was about behavior change. It is one critical thing if you're moving people from a culture that they are used to, that is cash, to something they see as foreign. These kinds of transformation takes a bit of time. You have to deal with the mindset of the people. Uh, I, I, I heard, I think one of the, the uh, people said on the, on the program that they couldn't find point of sale terminals, uh, I mean, when they were looking around to, to pay for items. Why is that so? Because of the mentality of business people to accept the use of the point of sale to receive payment. So one of the, the major problems that we face in Ghana, uh, pursuing this agenda of a cashless society, is the attitude of the Ghanaian, you know, to, to change that mentality from accepting cash to accepting other forms of payment. Uh, Mr. Tate, we, we're listening. Sir. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. now tell me, so how are you going around these challenges? The, the point is that MTN money, uh, mobile money, for example, and other uh, mobile money uh, platforms that are offered by uh, some of these telecos around, how is GIPS uh, working with MTN mobile money, for example, to, to, make, uh, to make it more efficient, to help us migrate towards a cashless economy fast. Yeah, I, I like what George said at the beginning uh, when, when he said we need to define uh, the term cashless. I mean, there is not a possibility of totally eliminating cash from, from the system. I mean, what would the central bank be doing? I mean, the central bank doesn't seek to exist because they're supposed to issue currency and all that. Our objective, and indeed, uh, it is the vision of GIPS to move 
the country into an uh, electronic payment society, where electronic payments is the predominant way of paying for goods and services, and not the total elimination of cash. Right. So, um, I mean, how are so, you? So, 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 what we are doing currently, as an institution put in place by the by the central bank, is to provide that central platform. And I, and I like the word you used earlier on. The operative word for our mission is interoperability. Some of the speakers have spoken about silos of various payment systems that exist currently. There is fragmentation. But our role is to put in place the infrastructure that can unite all these forms of payment, you know, to make them interoperable. So, for example, somebody who is on MTN mobile money can easily send money across to somebody on Tigo. You know? So that kind of interoperability will bring the convenience that everybody's talking about. And interoperability will bring efficiency. You know, electronic payments also, one of the advantages is it, it brings about increase in the velocity of money. The way money moves within the economy is very fast. So there's efficiency in the way people do business. So, so what, is, what is the level of collaboration between yourselves and the telecos in this direction? Well, we have started some collaboration. In fact, uh, there has been some discussions initiated by the central bank, NCA, and, and the telcos. And I think that is where we have started from, and we will carry on the discussions. Uh, it will involve, because these are technical things, it will involve a lot of uh, technical work, you know, bringing together all these different systems. So it is not something that will happen overnight, but it is possible. And as I said, we have started talking, and our ultimate aim is to bring all these systems together. Thank you very much. Uh, Kweku Tete is head of projects at the Ghana Interbank Payment Systems, GIPS. Thank you for your time. Now, back to the studio. Let me uh, come to you, uh, uh, Ellie. Yes. Now, I know that MTN is targeting about 10,000 new subscribers. Which, which areas are your focus? Urban, rural? Well, um, our focus is going to be in the rural uh, communities because um, if you look at how far we have gone, uh, we believe that a lot of work has gone into the, the urban areas and it is now time to begin to pull our rural folks also uh, onto, the, onto the party uh, table so they can also participate. And um, our focus is going to be to drive a lot of uh, activations in the, in the rural communities, focusing on the mining and the plantations and farming areas. Uh, that's where we have a lot of uh, settler workers who today uh, are separated from their families and we want to find efficient means of moving money around to their families uh, when the need arises. And we believe that the, the, the channel is, is, is there uh, for, for us to create that opportunity for them. So that will be one of our key uh, focus. And um, once again, as we do that, um, like we are doing this evening, would also be the education part where they will also begin to appreciate the reason why these channels of payment uh, will bring a lot more advantage to them than always keeping cash. And we all know what happens in those environments when there's a big rain and there's a big flood. People, monies that are kept under beds and, and mattresses are washed away and people lose, lose money. But with, with such solutions like mobile money, monies that are kept on their wallet are not lost even if your phone is, is, is carried away by the, by the flood, you are able to uh, reactivate your account and use the service uh, effectively. And because it also has lots of services you can use it for today, you can use it to pay your school fees, you can use it to shop, then instead of having to go through the hassle, some people I know spend the whole day to go to the bank to go and get a, a, a purchase order to pay school fees. Today, 
we are enabling that to these channels. And so that would also create a lot more excitement in, in the, in so the way they do So very soon people things. can pay yeah. their school fees yeah, on, people with their mobile to pay phones. Their, 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 their school fees to using their, their, their mobile uh, phones, uh, using their wallets. Um, and by saying that, let me just also mention uh, from the discussion that uh, Mr. Tete was talking about, the fact that it, it cannot be done in silos. That's, that's the very reason why, uh, as part of the MTN Mobile Money Month, we believe that we need to start building consensus, uh, talking about the issues around building a cashless economy, so that we have all the players, all the key stakeholders participate, and most importantly, begin to get policy makers, policy decision makers, also think through the whole discussion. And because at the end of the day, we need them to influence a lot of things. And where uh, the uh, other speakers have also talked about having a national approach, that is where we'll get a national approach. And that's where we'll get the proper systems in place and the policies that will direct us uh, towards the cashless uh, economy that we are working towards. So today, we are talking about it. And it is all the effort towards creating that cashless economy in the future. And we believe that the time is right to begin to do that for, for the sake of, of, of managing a better economy into the future. We're discussing the transition towards a cashless society. Let's get back to the discussion now. Um, now, George, I, I know since uh, 2001 that eTransact, um, in collaboration with other banks, introduced the eCard. Uh, how has it been? Let me make a little correction there. We didn't do it together with them then. E-Transact started in Ghana 2005. But E-Transact actually also works with the banks. E-Transact is us two sides. We deal with those who do have bank accounts. We also deal with those They're who unbanked. have banked. We deal with the unbanked. And we also deal with the banked. Okay. Now take a situation of two people in two different banks. Who wants to transfer money to each other? How do we use cashless system to do that? I want to transfer money. I have an account with GCB, and I need to transfer money to somebody in Echo Bank, UBA, Echo Bank. The traditional way is for me to go, either issue check, which will take days. If I don't want it to go through days, I go and cash the money, cash, take it physically to this to place. This now, e transact, we, 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 because we have banks on our platform, we actually move money electronically between these banks. Of course, you can do it from your mobile phone. The only difference between us is we, we actually work with them, we work with all the telcos, because we are not a telco. So we're not limited to one, uh, uh, I mean, we, we bridge the gap between the banks and the telcos. We are more like an aggregator. So that's one of the things we do. And for the unbanked, we have a card, like e-card. It's more like what the MTM Mobile Money do, but we do it on card. And where can you use this card? Only in purchasing or in transactions? Or how does the e-card work? You know, you know, currently, we, we, one can say Ghana has not even started internet payment. We're just about starting. Yeah. We were not those who partner real internet payment in Ghana. You use this card. That is, if you have money on it, you need to go load money on it and use the card on the internet side to buy things locally, not buy things from outside or pay for so a, a couple of things. You can only use the card on point of sale devices. Of course, the points are still not many also. You also use this card also on the ATM. So it's more of a hybrid of both the bank and your bank using whatever means you, that mobile phone or whatever, the internet, the point of saying the ATM, that's what we do with these banks. So how is the, the level of patronage? What I want to establish is that, I mean, if I compare the success rates of eSwitch and you have the e-card and people use ATMs, I want to know how the e-card is catching on. You, you know, the, because of the challenges all of us in the industry are facing, one key challenge is how do I even get money? That's one area we really were not talking about. We're talking about the adoption. Now, you have the card. You need to put money on the card. I have my MTM mobile money. I need to put money on it first. You know, people always compare MTM mobile money with m -Pesa. They are not the same thing. With m -Pesa, you use your airtime. That makes it easier. It makes the adoption easy to catch on. But with my e-transact card, 
with my history card, with my Tigo cash, with my MTM mobile, I have to look for somewhere to go and put money. I, I have to go back to the bank. You primarily have to go to the bank. Primarily, which is even a though there challenge. are agents. Hmm. You go to this bank, the bank tells you we don't do it here. It's a general problem where, where all of us are facing. Now, we try to play down that side and concentrate on those who have bank accounts. So you have bank accounts, you tie your mobile phone to your bank account, you're not gonna be you're not gonna be loading money. At least we serve those bank people. That's the immediate, that's where we're able to have some quick leverage. Because we remove the initial problem of loading. But then the adoption is still there. Somebody even you have the mobile phone is attached to his bank account, he still want to go and pay his DSTV bill with cash. What can I do? There's nothing I can do to, to help that person until he catches on. Even though you say pay 50p, maybe I say pay 50p for this service. He wants to track there, or he wants to take a trot there, or he wants to take a, a card there. And two, he's not even looking at it. He's not even counting the money. He tells me the service is uh, is expensive, so I want to take it there myself. <laughs> I, I'm sure. Ellie, I'm uh, Ellie, sure Ellie, you, tell me, Ellie, you bear me what, witness. What, uh, I mean, we the have the same challenge. George is raising uh, <laughs> are, are, are core issues. How do people put money onto the MTN mobile money wallet? Uh, uh, is uh, it easy for them to do that? Yeah. Um, let, let me let me say that 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 is one one side of it, and how you are able to manage your your agents. But let me also correct um, uh, one, one quick thing George mentioned regarding M-Pesa. The, the M-Pesa model is, is not too different from what we have. The, the only difference is that in the M-Pesa model is a telco-led model. So the telco, which is Safaricom, is able to run with a lot of the things quickly. Uh, in the Ghana situation, it is a bank-led model. So in all instances where you have to do these new adoptions or new services, you need to involve the bank. And we all know how uh, slow the banks are in terms of getting onto new stuff. So that sets it apart. Secondly, they also have been able to develop their agent network very well. So yes, they, 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 you need to load your wallet uh, with money. And because they have good opportunities to have good merchants uh, or agents available, uh, they also are able to do that much, much effectively because in that scenario, you still need to put money on your wallet. But coming to the Ghana uh, experience, we, we came on board um, at a time when we all know what happened with this switch. So you are trying to develop uh, from a base where there have been challenges and trying to create a new channel. Uh, luckily, we are talking about a channel which is the mobile. Um, what we've tried to do, and uh, like George said, is to try and build an agent network because it's important that you have agents who will be able to provide the service. Um, whilst you build the agent network, you also need to work on, on, on the adoption side because if you have agents who are sitting and customers are not working to them to do business, then they would also not be investing in the business. So it's an egg and chicken uh, uh, kind of uh, ch uh, challenge. So you must have both run uh, in tandem. So you must have enough agents at one point in time, and you must have sufficient subscribers who go out to seek their service. And that's what MTN is and seeking to do. And that's what we are do. seeking to do. Are you it, successful? It, are you yeah, to a large extent, making progress? We, we say we are making a lot of progress because today we are getting a lot of people who otherwise would have been using money in a, in their in a traditional ways, where people take money, physical cash give it to drivers, travel long distances to do business. Today, with mobile money, uh, they are able to put money on their wallets before they go and do their trading. I'm talking about traders. So at least we are making some, some impact. But we all know how slow people are in adopting these things. So until we get the talking going, the education going, and word of mouth, we will not be able to build that credibility. And once again, it's important we also recognize the role of the central bank in setting up this uh, particular service. You realize that they've put in the uh, branchless banking guidelines to guide the setting up of these uh, services, including MTN mobile money. But we need to go beyond just putting guidelines down and also seeing to the adoption and the support that needs to go to all the players. 
So we expect the central bank to play a more central role to come to the party and, and try and build some kind of credibility around these payments. And how do they do that, really? Uh, we believe that, um, like has started in Nigeria, where the central bank is heavily involved. The central bank here can also be heavily involved in all the educational part of what we do and in all the fora that they have to engage uh, business people and civil society. That, those are all opportunities where they can chip in this thing and talk about it. Because once it is coming from the policy makers that these are the new ways mm. that we need begin to go, mm. people begin to pay attention, mm. more, much more than when it is only coming from businesses like us mm. and uh, uh, e-transat, mm. where people will only begin to look at it, maybe because MTN is saying it, they have their own interests. But this is a national call, mm. and that is why we believe that in this month of August, we need to establish it in the minds of everybody. Mm. That is a national thing. We need to look at it from that holistic point of view, and we need to bring everybody to the party so that we can have a much more organized and, and, and focused front to be able to forge our head towards uh, 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 creating this cashless economy that we are all looking forward to. I'll come back to you. And let, me let, let me go to let, George. Let me quickly add to what yeah. you said about the, the, the involvement, the of, the involvement of, the, of the government. I mean, it goes beyond central bank. Central bank. It must government. be a whole government machine. I will take a place like Japan. When they were starting something like this, there were policies, policies that were driven down to make sure people use cards. In those days, it's cards. If you use card, you're going to get these incentives. If you don't use card, you're going to pay higher. In Nigeria, that I mentioned. If you're going to cash some money on the on any bank's counter, if it goes beyond certain amount of money, you're going to pay penalty. You are expected to channel those money through an electronic means. So, because we were talking about adoption, people's culture, people's culture also include that they don't want to lose money. So we can play on that area of I don't want to lose money. If this thing is twenty Ghana City, this one is twenty one. I'll go for the twenty. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So somebody will now look for, okay, I'd rather go and use it this way. And the businesses that may want to adopt it could be given some tax incentive. I, I mean, a couple of days, when I say the, it has to be the whole government, I mean, I mean, some agency were on my neck to pay uh, tax on the, on the transaction charges we, we are collecting from the people. And you see, when this begins, I want to up. You feel pinched, right? Well, I feel, I feel pinched, but I'm going to pass the pinch down to the user. You see? So in passing it down to the user, the cost of running the business becomes higher, and the user also runs away. And then this, this national agenda will don't all achieve it. You see, so it has to be an holistic some incentives for every form of so user. So do, do these incentives? exist with the Nigerian uh, example. Exist, exactly what tell I'm me, saying. Tell me uh, the success, the Nigerian success. Share with me. How how has the government or the cashless um, whole project been able to target the majority of the 78% of the unbanked uh, in, in Nigeria? Of course, the number is still huge. But there, are, there are measures that have been put in place and they even try to put them in scopes. In Lagos now they do what they call cash light. It's they're doing it in bits and pieces. Cash light is, okay, let's start it, you know, a combination of both. Now, what it means now, for instance, if you go to a bank, you cannot collect more than 150,000 Naira on any bank card. If you attempt, you're going to pay a certain percentage over the excess. So you are forced to use this means to do your transaction because you're going to pay more. But where you leave the people to, to, to make the choices of where the two is the same, if I use cash, it's the same as if I use, I use uh, electronic means. You're going to use what is used to, to. So we want the government to at least help. You know, come out with not just policy. Policy is for businesses, individual. If you use this thing and make it a national thing, you like pass it as a bill. And then it will drive it gradually and gradually and gradually. It's not going to be at one. Otherwise, I mean, what you're suggesting is that if this does not happen, there's a likelihood that this whole uh, vision of moving cashless is going to slow down woefully. When you give the people the, the, the choice they are used to, it's still fine. They, are, they, they don't see what they are losing. And a business will tell you, what do I stand to gain if I'm going to use 
MJ Mobile Money to collect. Tell me what do I stand to gain? It's, it's not seeing it. But if you tell him he's going to, his tax incentive for any amount to collect, I was in US last year, the person I wanted to use card to pay. It tells me if I use card to pay him, he's going to pay, I'm going to pay higher. But if I use cash, so I went to the ATM and withdraw the cash and give him. That's what I'm talking about. If I go for the one that is that suits me, that is, that is better for me. If they have told me if I use card to pay, I'm going to pay less, I will slot in my card. If we adopt the same thing here, a little tax there and the people mind 50p here and there, if you use this thing, it's going to move. It's going to move. That's what we need. That's the next thing. The government has tried. They put the infrastructure in place. But infrastructure alone is not going to drive this thing. If you leave him alone to do his own thing, he'll be doing his own, I'll be doing my own. We'll be cutting each other on prices just to make sure. But you can't cut below your, your cost price. I'll come back to you, George, to, to talk about the inter... inter what do they call it? Operability. Such a, operability. such a big word. Interoperability problems that we spoke about. But, uh, Ellie, tell me, what are the cost implications? For using the service? For using empty and mobile money. Well, um, I, I mean, if I want to send 50 Ghana cities to my mother in the village, how much will I pay to get the money on and how much does she pay to take the money? Uh, I mean, in terms of putting money on your, your wallet, it's, it's free. Uh, what we do instead is to uh, incentivize uh, the agents so that they will be able to keep money so they can help customers to put money on their wallets. But um, when you are sending 50 uh, Ghana cities, uh, you pay um, 50 pesos, which is the amount so you can send that money to your, your mom. Uh, if your mom has a wallet, then he can go and cash it from her wallet. Uh, if your mom doesn't have a wallet, uh, there's also an opportunity to still send the money. In this case, you are sending the money and putting some uh, uh, code, we call a token and a secret code which then enables uh, your, your mom to go walk to any merchant to go and, and, and cash the money. And um, the important thing there is to ensure that the merchants are, are up and running. And um, I'll, I'll just tell you this, that one of the things which we've also observed um, from, from our side is a lot more people are using MTN mobile money today, but not necessarily uh, uh, using their wallets. So they go to the merchants or they go to the agents, go and uh, uh, hand over their cash, and then the agent does the transactions on their behalf, and then the other party uh, goes to receive the money. So once again, the issue of adoption is very key. People must begin to have the confidence to, to you do these things uh, from their wallets. And we are putting quite a number of incentives in, in, in our month activities to try and incentivize people uh, to be able to use their wallets more often and, and therefore grow the, the use of these uh, uh, payment channel and for that matter uh, send us towards our goal of, of, of getting people using electronic means instead of uh, holding cash uh, for their transactions. You're watching PM Express uh, Corporate Wednesday and you can send us more of your texts and comments on facebook.com slash multi TV Ghana or on any of our uh, Facebook portals. You can also send a text 1760. I have a couple of your messages coming in and I would like to read some of them. Uh, this one from Albert from Apam. He says the black man is capable of managing his own affair so long as we have the technocrats. It's going to be possible to have a cashless society. And Felix Enim Ramos says Ghana is just trying to copy, forgetting that necessary equipment are not available. Did they even seek expert advice? In fact, uh, monkeys play by sizes, so Ghana should not be overconfident. I'll come to you to uh, address this comment. And then, Obin Kwame Kenneth says that I have used MTN mobile money and I like it. But when you go to their office or agents to withdraw uh, money from your account, they either tell you their network is down or there is no money. If improved, it will reduce the amount of money we take along when we're going out. And then uh, Oscar says, what Obin said is an undeniable fact. I, I reckon that is referring to the previous uh, statement. And Chinabi Eric says, we live in a high-tech world where everything is possible. Richard Opoku Fodjo says, let me tell the world it's the best way to send money to others. So I say 
MTN Mobile Money. Keep it up. And Greet Charles Kismet says, It's very annoying. My account has never worked since registration. And then uh, Mark Davis Davison says, Yes, the MTN money is okay. MTN is the worst network among all the network. This is a comment from King Romeo. And then Sadia Abdullah says, Using the money, mobile money is so easy and very convenient. Trust me. Bismarck Kumar says he tried using the MTN mobile money last year. It was so cool. Call credit when you really need it. What I don't like is they changed the percentage from 50% to 30%. And Teodios Granting King says, guys, uh, Airtel money is the best. Well, this is referring to another uh, teleco provider. And then we'll go on to Kweku Kodria who says, Mr. MT, kindly ask the MTN man, how are they going to tackle the accessibility problem? This is against the background that ATMs are run 24-7. And Bwachi Samuel also says that the use of counterfeit has become dangerous in this country. So a cashless society is the way to go. Aaron O'Rish Kwame Hova says, I think it's... An important tool that we should go along, which will go a long way to increase the lifespan, if not the overall value of the currency, especially the paper money, saving the nation the quota we need to spend on replacing worn out currencies. And um, Emperor Kwame Selassie says, I tried registering for the ease rich, only to be told my fingerprint cannot be loaded into their database. Can you imagine what will happen? Uh, if I needed money urgently. And Jarvis Avoca says, MTN money, mobile money is really convenient for a transaction of 30 Ghana cities. I was charged 50 pesos. That's really cool. And Foga Desdede uh, Nukunu says, the banks are becoming helpless in the quest for the cashless economy in Ghana. I prefer to keep my money in my pocket or in my room because of the nasty experience from the malfunctioning of an ATM. I nearly lost a family member because the ATM could not accept my card. Even with mobile money, I don't trust the telecommunications industry. Well, let me come back to the studio and put some other issues. Um, the first one is the question about connectivity problems. Uh, Bing Kwame says that I have MTN mobile and I like it, but when I go to the office to withdraw, they either tell me their network is down, I cannot withdraw. How is MTN uh, resolving the connectivity problems? Well, um, I think like every uh, telecoms or uh, technology uh, tool, once in a while you have uh, issues here and there. But uh, the general attitude of, of agents is one of the key areas we are tackling. And therefore, uh, I'll be surprised if, if he, he went to our, our uh, office because our offices uh, once the service is up and running, you would receive adequate service. What we've also tried is also to improve the visibility of these uh, uh, agents or merchant points so that it will be easy for people to assess it. So the education of the agents to understand the service they are providing so their customer service can be more enhanced. And also the uh, fact that we've improved visibility so people can easily identify agents and be able to transact. These are some of the measures we've put in place uh, to ensure that availability is improved and people can assess uh, uh, the service. Somebody talked about uh, the fact that ATMs are 24-7. Today, you are able to uh, withdraw money from your mobile money wallet through an ATM, okay? And, and these, these things are there. And, and so, how, how is this done? Well, it's, it's called a cardless transaction. So you go to the ATM and then you, you request to do a cardless transaction. It takes you through the process. And it requests uh, for you to select your service. So if, for instance, it's MTM mobile money, you select it. And then you put in your wallet number, which is your phone number. And then it takes you through the process, the amount you want to withdraw. And the ATM dispenses the cash for you, and your wallet is debited. So all those services are there. It's, it's just a matter of time and education for people to understand how to do these things. And I'm sure they'll find it very, very convenient uh, to use. Now, George, you heard one of our comments saying that uh, Ghana is trying to copy, forgetting that uh, the necessary uh, equipment, I guess, the necessary infrastructure are not in place. What's your, what's your comment on that? I mean, um, I, I also beg to differ. Like we said earlier on, we are, we are on ground. I mean, we can tell you the infrastructures are in place. 
there's nothing we want to put in place. It's just to improve what we have. But what we need, what we need to start, in fact, we have started. There's not the MTM Mobile Money need to put in place to start. They've started. I'm just talking about cardless uh, technology. This is a technology that is just, I'm not even sure. These are technologies that are even started by Africans. Okay, so we you can even say we have better technology to drive this than where this thing came from. But talking about copying things, we uh, copying is part of life. What can you do? I mean, do you want to reinvent wheel? Okay. If we don't want to copy cars now, we want to start building our own cars. Copy is part of it, but we copy and adopt and adapt it to our environment. Copy what is good and leave the bad one out. I think we have infrastructure, and I think we can copy, but we copy to adapt. e transact for instance, we started this thing in Africa. I mean, this is for Africa, and then we built it for Africa. But we cannot say totally all the tools we need we didn't get some from outside. We copy, but we adopt to our system. Nobody can do it better than us. And I think that is the message you want to, I want to leave people with. We have to do it by ourselves. We have to believe in ourselves. We have to believe in all the things. We have to believe that there's no 100% system. A system will be down today. It be, that is because it's a system. Human being even breaks down because nothing is permitted to work 100% continue to work, but we manage it and manage it and get better, we manage and get better. That's what we should be preaching. Now, earlier we talked about interoperability, the mm. issues and the challenges. Um, why must all the stakeholders have a common platform? Well, it's good to have a common platform. We, that in, in the business world, there's something they call competition and then collaboration. If you join the two together, you, you have a win-win situation. MTN is the largest mobile telecom today. I mean, having a couple of, I mean, about 10 million, for instance, but they still don't have it all. Some fellows have two, some fellows have one point something. So if we put all of this together on a common platform, it turns out it's running about, have about a couple of banks, about, about 10, but we don't have it all. So. That is why we have something like a Gibbs in the middle now. That's one of the role Gibbs is trying to play. These silos have started. It's good to start in silos, but now we're trying to combine them together so that somebody who have MTM mobile money can transfer to an account that is on e-transact. And somebody who is on e-transact can transfer to a Tigo cash, if it is possible. Then nobody is left out. Then it becomes a win-win for all the operators. So that I think it's a good thing. The infrastructure also for it has started. It's in place. That's the role of Gibbs. It's not our role. Even though among ourselves there are little we could do, but on the national scale, Gibbs is there doing that. Right, I'll come back to Ellie to wrap up, but before then, I will take some of your messages. Aaron York says, a cashless society is a brilliant idea to reduce the rate of carrying money on the on the head all the time which invites armed robbers to attack you easily however some banks make the system so boring that in times of emergency their atms play uh, a tune to your dance and uh, kwami jima says mtn money up 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 well a, a pool or something like that well <laughs> and then this one from Yumano Le Japan says a cashless society will be beneficial to businessmen and women in Ghana, but the problem is the technicalities associated with it. It is sometimes confusing, you know. This is from Yumano Le Japan. And Elliot Afeku says it's amazing. Since I have subscribed, I never travel with money with me. I cash the money, for example, a plow here, and if I reach my destination, example, Accra, I cash it out through uh, through it through my partners oh try it and experience it it's fantastic and then Boachi Samuel says that if all these are employed in the system the Bank of Ghana should accept uh, should accept the counterfeit uh, well I don't know what Boachi is trying to say but I guess that he's trying to say that if uh, we have a cashless uh, system then Bank of Ghana can easily accept counterfeits and destroy them or something of that sort. And Giovanni Nautica Obobi says, I enjoyed using MTN money uh, because 
anytime someone wants to send me money but in a small amount he prefers using the mobile money i also use it often to recharge my account balance since i get 30 percent bonus on any amount i recharge but the problem is i have I have is the charges 50p charge for any amount to 50 Ghana cities and most at time the vendors do complain about the network I think we've touched on this yes, um, issue with the vendors I don't know whatever uh, mobile money uses a different network to operate also MTN must allow other ro roadside vendors to operate uh, it makes it more accessible to the general public and then Foga Desde Nukuno says the banks are becoming helpless in the quest for cashless economy I've read this already and then uh, Dan K. Odai says the problem with MTN money is that the officers in charge are the various customer centers feel they do subscribers a favor by providing the service I've told I've, I've been told recently and empty an office that they don't have a cash available at the office so can't perform a cash out service for me well uh, these are some of your messages which came in i'll come back to, i'll come to you earlier uh, to wrap up what should uh, audiences and customers and subscribers of mtn money expect in the month of the mtn money uh, month and subsequently well uh, we we intend to excite them we intend to uh, educate them and we intend to make um them uh, more accessible uh, to the service. Uh, just to touch on a few things we'll be doing as part of the month activities. On Friday, there'll be a stakeholder conference. It's a roundtable discussion where we are bringing all the key stakeholders to come and talk about this same subject of uh, working towards a cashless uh, uh, economy. And it will be happening uh, at the Moving Peak uh, Hotel and it will be uh, 9.30 a.m. in the morning. And uh, that will be another opportunity to further discuss this topic. And we'll have all the key stakeholders from the Central Bank, from uh, Civil Society, from the World Bank, SIGAP, and others to, to participate. Then I also said we would also be having some uh, incentives for people who use mobile money. So look out for those incentives, either from uh, our service centers, our partner banks, or, or merchants. And there would also be opportunity for people to learn more about the service, uh, where you can go and get more education. And also, finally, opportunity for those who haven't yet subscribed to mobile money to subscribe, own a wallet, and experience the wonderful uh, service that we are bringing uh, to, to Ghanaians. And we hope that by the end of the month and beyond, uh, more people will come on board mobile money, more people will know about what we are doing towards creating a cashless economy. I think Ghana will be a better place. George, I'll take your final word too. Well, the journey has started. People should be patient with us. When you start this kind of journey, you're going to fall down, you're going to stand up, but we're going to get there. Those who built Rome didn't build it in a day. Americans built America to the point where people want to rush them. Let's take our time to build our own environment with what we've started. It's the best way to go. It's the only way to go. But we've started. People should keep faith with us. Well, we've started and we'll get there. Keep faith with us. My name is Stephen Anti and gentlemen, Eli Hini, Commercial Senior Mobile Money Officer, was in the studio with us. George Babafemi, Chief Operating Officer of eTransact, also joined us in the studio. John Gachi, his economist, was online. And Kweku Tete, Head of Projects at GIPS, also joined us online.